we're live. Let some people hop hop on in here since we're not going live for another five five minutes. There was my eight thousand dollar studio light. You have seven people in here. We're taking over. I have this balanced on a rocking chair. So. All right, I think I think we're good. You can see the, the chaos behind me. I need to do something about this white space. Jerry, it's great to see you too. I hope you I hope you stick around. I've been MIA uh, off YouTube. I lost all my footage from the last video I was gonna shoot. I've just been been guiding like a maniac, so. Thanks, Lucas. We're gonna keep a PG in here. This is a diet, this is a diet coke. Go put some holes in my brain, some aspartame. Ten peeps all up in here. Let's cr let's cross promote on the gram. Oh, absolutely. Duck Camp is quickly becoming one of my favorite fishing companies. This is actually, check this out. This is the Duck Camp X About Trout logoed hoodie. Um, I'm ordering more this week. They sold out real quick. So keep, if, you, if you want one, keep your eyes open for that. They should be on the site or I'll make a note on Instagram. All right, we have three minutes before the official kickoff time, so. But yeah, Duck Camp, I'm actually wearing their waiting pants right now. I have a Duck Camp uh, bamboo hoodie on that I'll be wearing for the next few days. I have two of these, I have four of them. Two of these blue ones with my logo, and then I have two camo ones when I don't want people to see me. Quiet in the comments. No one has anything anything fun to say. Has anyone been fishing? Anyone been ribbon dancing, making reggae records? Does anyone want to draw me something for this white space that'll forever be in my YouTube videos? The hugest one of them all is here. Ben, I appreciate you. This is this is the first about trout live stream. This is this is code for I uh, I haven't been filming. I lost all my footage from the other day. I shot a video where we went floating, and it was not enough to make a video, but I'll splice it in. Oh, all right, here's everybody. A line rack for the Echo Shadow X thirty one ten. Uh, a three weight floater is fine, or just a like your own of shorty. You don't need. I just fish really, really long leaders, so uh, you know a standard three weight weight forward, or if you want a euro line, uh, go for it. Reese, Reese, I appreciate you, and I hope you cut a lot of fish with your cousin. Dealing with the wonderful people that are coming from Vegas. Jay, learning how to row. I have a healthy respect for the water. Yeah, I learned uh, I learned how to crab with, um, I used to, I'll just say his name. I used to, Mark Shimazu from Avid Angler was the one that taught me how to crab. This was years ago. Um, 
we were floating the Yakima, but a lot of trial and error. I, the first day that I got a, a like my raft and I took it floating, I jackknifed the trailer on the boat ramp and one of his guide buddies was there. And so like the next day in the shop, I was like, man, you know, I'm learning how to back in a trailer. And uh, he's like, oh, you're that idiot. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, my buddy was going to take his boat out and he had the trailer jackknifed for 10 minutes. I was like, oh, you, you live and learn. Um, Lucas, I'm happy you replaced that rod. Positive vibes only. The drought hasn't, like, it's not as bad as it was last year. I just put a boat in in the river in the town that I used to live in. So you guys can can figure that out where that was. Like last year, this time it was 200 CFS and we floated it at 460. You have like a short, short window to go float that. Um, but I primarily guide on the one of the last 65 trips that I've guided all of those have been on the San Juan. So because it's a tailwater, you know, the drought kind of affects the peripheral stuff, but in terms of like my guiding personally, that's the nice thing about the San Juan is it's, there's always water in it. Martin, I'm happy. I'm happy you got to go WWF WrestleMania on some trout on the arc. Uh, if you're up in the arc Valley, say hello to my guy, um, John Legau over there at arc anglers, animal in the oars. Um, any memorable fish? Yes, I caught my personal best rainbow um, not too long ago. It's my uh, my screensaver. I didn't tape it, um, but there there she is. Um, so that ate a streamer, which was super cool. I was getting some heat for putting a stinger hook um, on a game changer, but on the San Juan, you can only fish one hook in each streamer. So if I had to choose one at the head or a stinger, I'm gonna use a stinger. <laughs> I want to be where the mayflies are as well. <laughs> well. Awesome. I'm glad this is building. We have 27 people in here. It's bumping. So we'll keep this going, keep this loose. Reese, I don't know why that message was retracted, but I'm here for you, man. Lucas, the, yeah, you can always, it's always meat season. Or mayfly season. Best fishing in the lower 48, obviously with your boy about trout on the San Juan. Come on now, Aiden. Um, it, it depends. What do you want to fish for? You want to fish for trout, for bass, brook trout, brown trout? It, it's, it's your life, man. Choose your path. I've never had any issues with Sims taking care of you. I think, I mean, their old policy was, um, you know, the first ones on them. I think now it's if your first tear within 12 months and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll hook it up. But I, I think you gotta pay shipping. I, I sent back a jacket that was old that, that had the zipper bust off on it. It stopped working and they took care of it, but I had to, had to pay. I've never fished in Michigan. I have family in Michigan, but I have not not fished there. Brood X in the mid-Atlantic. Yes, I have. I'm from Virginia. So 17 years ago when I was in eighth grade, you can do the math on that, figure out my age. Um, we had the cicada hatch, and then Pennsylvania gets a 14-year Brood X, and I went up there in college, and I fished some of the, the rivers in central Pennsylvania, and they were throwing big cicadas. It was unreal. When I'm coming, oh, when I'm coming to Cali. Uh, so I was in California. I did the speaker circuit last year. I was the last speaker before the Rona. Um, I might be in San Diego next year. Um, I'm, I've been doing a lot of Zoom presentations. So if anyone out there, um, maybe a fun fact, I also do some presentations as well. Um, but I've been doing Zoom just because of the, the pandemic. But I think I'm going to be in California next year um, in San Diego. Manual transition. So yeah, Ben, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I'm stalling it less. So I totaled my Subaru like a month ago. I hit a deer. Actually, the deer hit me. It, it, it jumped in front of the car. I didn't even have time. I wasn't texting. I wasn't doing anything I was supposed to do. I wasn't taking selfies. Um, I, I literally saw, said deer, bang, smash the front of the car out. And I had a bunch of guide trips right after that. So I had like two days to get a car. And um the only thing that was left was a Tacoma. You know, once I bought my first Sim Solar Flex hoodie, 
I was like, you know, I just, I can't have the Subaru anymore. I need to be a real guide. So I, I you know, it was, it was God's plan. So I got a stick shift Tacoma um, and it's been an adventure, but my buddy Brandon in the comments was there. He, he saw me Tokyo drifting on the dirt road. So I'm, I'm getting better and better. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely garbage at stick, especially like on the, the boat ramps where I guide or the, the hill starts, but I'm getting them, you know, one out of every five times now I'm stalling it out, but you know, you got to live your truth, man. That's uh, it is what it is. I didn't want to buy like a, I mean, I, I got the truck that I could afford. I went to the Nissan dealership and they, they, they gave me a sick deal on a Nissan Titan, like a 2020, but I, you know, it's a little, a little too rich for my blood. I, I need to be like Maddie and get them for free, but I'm not there yet. You guys can help me grow this channel so I can get free trucks. So, uh, and I don't mean that in any sort of disrespectful way. I, I, I mean, I drive a free Honda Prius or if someone wanted to give me a free PT cruiser, I'd be a PT cruiser ambassador. So, Hey, it's Chrysler. If you're out there, I'll own it. Um, How about you guys? Where have you been fishing? Anyone hitting any deer with their trucks or cars or? I did not get to keep the deer. It ran off. I couldn't find it. Um, but then I found one on the side of the road, not too far from where I hit it. Um, so it got away from me. For guide trips these days, my book is in the other room. I think I got 15 this month already. Um, and then I've taken some time off, but I mean, I have trips through October. So June, June's more than halfway full. July is already stacking up. Um, August, I have a few trips, you know, it's, especially as an independent uh, guiding is so feast or famine. So it's like in last summer, for example, now granted we had a situation, right. But I planned a trip with the broskies up to Colorado because I didn't think I was going to book that much. And then I sat on the phone for four hours and filled the entire calendar out and ended up catch cutting my my day short now that you know i've been around longer um it i book out further in advance uh, but just just uh email me info at about trout.com my website i try to black out the days because i do online bookings through my site and then i just do them over the phone and it's been super busy so i, I haven't been the best about blacking out my online calendar but info at about trout.com spencer and we'll get you on the wand I have never fished the Truckee, nor have I fished Pyramid, um, but I mean, I got to do it for the gram, so maybe this fall, who knows? Maybe I'll see you out there. Uh, Striper on the swing is awesome. I used to live in Seattle, um, and then I just got my Trouts Bay out when I was in Arizona, so it was fun to get a two-hander back out. Brooks, congrats on the personal best with the Brook Trout. Ben, I wish I could go to Alaska. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in New Mexico. It's like, it's the other Alaska. The Yak in Southwest PA. I fished the Yak, Jerry. That's a good one. Um, fish the North Branch or the, the Savage. Don't, no, no, no one hunt me down for giving away that. Yeah, Aiden, I'm sorry about the turkey. I had a buddy hit a turkey. I heard an insane story about a guy that hit an owl and it came through the windshield and he ended up rolling his truck. Um, that's, that's crazy. So I've got, I'm glad I'm not the only one dodging wildlife out there. 18 wheeler and almost hit a doe. Ugh. Well, I'm glad you dodged it, man. That would have been a day under for sure. Oh, and I used to fish the Soho a lot. Um, I went to JMU in Virginia at James Madison University. And uh, I would watch the gauges like a hawk and every time they ran a sluice, I'd go down and night fish, um, fish the sulfurs. I, I love the South Holston. Absolutely one of my favorite rivers. Small world. Actually my personal best brown trout is still from the, from the Soho. I peaked in college. Well, Ben, keep me posted on AK. <laughs> I hit, I've hit a coyote, but the Subaru took it like a champ. When I fish a streamer, do I ever put on two? All the time. Um, like I was saying before, like on the San Juan, where I do the bulk of my guiding, 
you can only have one hook in in each streamer, but I'll throw like a lot of smaller, let me see if my lake box, oh, it's right here. This is an absolute disaster. So yeah, I'll throw like a lot of tandem rigs. So like, here's like a leech. Um, I'll throw like very, this is a humongous bugger, which is one of my favorite streamers for the wand. It's just a woolly bugger with some tinsel chenille. Uh, I usually don't throw it with a chartreuse bead. This is kind of like an experimental pattern that when I was fishing lakes really heavy. But yeah, I throw a lot of double streamer rigs. I'll space them out five, five, it's five feet, five feet. It, it just depends on how heavy a tip if I'm in a river. Um, but yeah, I throw a lot of double streamer rigs or I'll throw like a big game changer and then like a smaller leech. Um, so the, the bigger fly will sometimes pull, pull a fish into the rig and they'll end up eating the smaller one. But this is like when I was really into lakes, this is my lake box. I haven't fished a lake in a while, unfortunately. Um, but I'll throw like a smaller kind of lake style streamer, lock style streamer in tandem with like a big articulated piece of meat. I fish a lot of unweighted flies and heavy tips. The best brand of CBD. Um, you got to ask your boy Chaz on that one. JMU, class of 2003. If those walls could talk, Zachary. I don't know. I, I transferred. I went to the University of Montana for my freshman year. I'm sure you could figure out why I decided to go there. And then I decided I wasn't partying enough. Um, so I transferred to JMU and my grade, I went from a Dean's List student to spending the rest of my college career trying to get my GPA up. Um, but I lived in Southview. So I don't know where, where you were at, but I lived in Southview. I did my, did my time. All right, Noah, <laughs> I see you in the comments, dog. Um, how do you tie on two streamers? Uh, I tie them off tags. So just a surgeon's not leave the tag. I did Big Spring Creek in central Pennsylvania, man. That's one. Well, we can talk about it because TU killed all the uh, all the the big rainbows out of there to make it a brook trout stream. But that was like some of the best fishing ever. And I'm not throwing shade at TU. It's just it is what it is. They wanted to make it a brook trout stream, so we lost a lot. The, big Spring Creek used to have it was it was like a mini San Juan. It, it was I, I've more 20 plus inch rainbows in there. It was absolutely unbelievable. Hyper technical. They'd sit there. Um, I fished Big Spring Creek a lot, and then they they wanted to make it a, a brookie stream. I said they did like a lot of stream improvements. They trapped a lot of the rainbows out. From my understanding, if I'm wrong, someone please correct me in the comments. But Big Spring Creek is probably the when I got to see it was absolutely the greatest fishery that I've ever fished. It was un, unreal. My trout spay rod is an Orvis Access. They don't make it anymore. It's an 11 foot five weight. And I fish an OPST integrated line on that. I think it's like, a, I think I have a 270 grain on there. Um, for streamers, I, I fish a 9.6 six weight. It's a Scott S4. And then I run a 15 foot sink tip. I have a 24 foot sink tip on the way in the mail. Um, but I usually just go, like I said, five feet to my first streamer, five feet to my second. If I'm running two, if I'm running one, I'll just go three to five feet, depending on conditions or how high I want the streamer to ride up, right? Like the closer it is to the tip, it, it's going to ride like a hockey stick. Does that make sense? So like the longer you space it from your sink tip, it'll poke up higher into the column if, if you're tracking, just, just like a mid rig. Um, Ashby, Trashby, they changed it. They changed the name of Ashby. Um, but yeah, Southview, Southview was wild. Um, <laughs> back at JMU, my old life. Um, but I fished a lot when I was at JMU. That's why, you know, I fished a lot of Shendo National Park, Mossy Creek, uh, Beaver, the South Holston. I'd go up to Big Spring Creek. I fished the Savage. I mean, I, I'd skip a lot of class. Um, but look, it all paid off, right? And I was a film major. I was a SMAD major at JMU. So media, media arts and design. Um, let's see. My favorite cicada pattern. I mean, you could fish just big stone fly patterns with a lot of orange on them. I never when when I fished the cicada hatch, that would have been in. That was right. When was that? That would have been 2011. I think it happened in Pennsylvania or 2012. Um, it's been a minute, but we were just throwing like like big salmon fly patterns and they were smashing them. 
Um, I have been around Mammoth Lakes and I did fish, uh, Hot Creek was really fun and I really liked the Owens. I just fished the lower Owens. I didn't fish, um, didn't fish the upper, but there's my buddy out there. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's, you can, I'm, I have guide brain right now. Um, gosh, Chris, what's your last name? Um, I'm, I'm going to, this is embarrassing, but I'm going to look it up right now. It's with a J. I'm fried. Uh, I, I, I feel like Chris Leonard. I'm sorry, Chris. Um, I would have gotten it eventually, but my buddy Chris Leonard guides there out of Kitteridge Sports. Um, so if you're looking for a guide out there, Chris is great. Brooks Ventui. Have you ever fished? If I pronounced that wrong, I apologize. Have I fished the caldera? Um, I've not fished the caldera. I fished just outside of the caldera. Um, I fished the vibe at all. I used to guide there. Um, I fish a lot in the mammoth area. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bajillion creeks. It looks awesome. I wish I had more time. I only had a couple days when I was in California speaking, um, but I was really impressed uh, with the fishing in Cali. I have some guide buddies in like Central California, Northern California as well. It's a it's a big state. I was born in California. Fun fact. I was a baby model in California. Also, fun fact. Um, most important thing when starting out as a guide: how to book trips. That's the big one. Um, if you have more like specific questions, I'm always happy, you know, I, I've worked for Outfitters, I'm independent now. Um, so there's a lot of nuance to it. It comes down to like what permits you hold is a big one. So you can't just like go out and be a guide. So like, for example, in a state like Colorado, if you wanted to guide, it's it, let's say the river you want to guide is on forest service land. You have to have a forest service permit. Like when here in New Mexico, I used to have forest service permits when I lived closer to forest service land. It's a process. And then you're allotted a certain amount of user days. Some states like Colorado, some of the Forest Service permits might all be gone. So you're going to have to work for an outfitter. Um, so there's there's nuance to it. Um, in some states, you need a guide license. In New Mexico, you don't. Um, you still need your Forest Service permits. If you're guiding state parks, there's permits for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to, to, to booking trips and how are you going to get those trips? Maybe you can start a YouTube channel, right? But the thing with a YouTube channel, you know, Eventually, you're going to get your card pulled. So, I mean, I you you want to make sure that you know the, the rivers that you're fishing, that you've put the time in, because you can only fake it so much. You know what I mean? Not not that you ever should, but um, that's that's huge as a guide. Is you 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 want to respect the profession, and you want to make sure that you're teaching your people, you're you're giving them an experience, you're you're teaching, um, and you're making sure they're leaving with a smile on their face. Some people want to go smash fish. Some people might want to learn a specific technique, and it's just developing and adapting the day uh, to your clients. Um, so I hope that I hope that helps. Um, but more power to you, uh, being a guide. It's it's best job ever. Pine Creek in PA. I never fished it. the har The hardest river I ever fished. Hold on. So, sorry, the comments just jumped. Oh, let's see. All right, so the hardest river I ever fished, I was in, well, Big Spring Creek, um, actually, was probably the most technical because up until that point, like in college, you know, I've been fly fishing since I was 11 years old. I'm 31. Um, doesn't mean I was good at it for a, a long time, right? Uh, but Big Spring Creek was really, really technical. There was a lot of complex currents, uh, the highly pressured fish, and then the Buna River in Bosnia when I fished over there. It was crystal clear. And I brought all the wrong flies. So, and, and I talk about that in the presentation I, I gave, but you know, I've had some like um, Russ Miller and Norm McTyma both on Team USA. They had fished over in Bosnia, but they fished the Northern part of the country. So like anything, those guys are gonna, any jewel that they throw me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it, right? Um, but in Southern Bosnia, you could fish like 57 flies. Like you weren't limited. So I went in like tying a lot of flies to their specifications, like small, small flies with huge, huge beads um, because there's a lot of different hydraulics and things like that. And I got to the Buna and 
it was very Eastern European, like two BMWs pulled up, some things were said. I gave them some Euros. There was dudes like chain smoking, listening to techno um, in the backyard. And I like, I've never, you know, it reminded me a lot of Big Spring Creek, but I just, yeah, I only had an hour to fish. So I ended up finding like the fastest run I could find because I could see the fish and they would spook when my drift would come by. Like if you think fish in the United States are spooky, like they've been getting killed in Europe since the dawn of man, right? So you'd make a bad drift and they'd be gone. So I had to find really fast water, match my rig to the water. Then I ended up popping some fish or I caught a soft mouth trout. I hooked two, landed one, and then just cut the day because it's all I wanted. My day was... Wasn't gonna be any better than that. And here, where is it? There's a soft mouth trout. Boom, right there on the wall from the Buna. I, I had that book when I was 12, Prozik's uh, Trout of the World. Um, they stock bows now in the lower sections of Big Springs. Yeah, that that's new to me when I was there. It was a lot of wild fish. Um, but hopefully Dayton, yeah, Europe was the hardest place I fished. My favorite Nick Cage movie is Vampire's Kiss. Never heard you talk about how to measure your tippet. It's super dorky. Oh yeah, here it is, Ben. Here's how I measure my tippet. So I know from the inside of my wrist to the crook of my elbow is 12 inches. From the tip of my middle finger to the crook of my elbow is 17. That's 20, somewhere in there. So like when I'm rigging up or I'm moving indicators, I just measure everything on my arm so I know. So if I'm pulling off 18 inches, 18 inches, right? The fish isn't going to not eat it because I pulled off 17 instead of, you know, 18.7. Um, that's where I was before JP. I trying to see. So I, have this, I have this delicately balanced on a rocking chair. So if it falls off, that's, that's, it's not an earthquake. Yeah, Mammoth is, Mammoth is awesome. Do I add some marabou tapped on your reel to increase your seven what do you like to add some marabou taped onto your reel no man i actually don't i euro nymph with a big treble hook and i put like 10 bb size split shots on it and i kick up a huge mud cloud and then when all the fish come in to eat it i just huck it in there and just set blindly and my catch rate has gone through the roof you should try it Connor, I love your brother. I don't know who he is, but I appreciate it. Beely Datstar. I would say, you know, you want to follow state and local regulations. We'll leave it at that. Darth Monkey 85, what's popping? Yeah, JP, I don't know very much about California at all. Like I said, you know, Chris Leonard uh, really showed me around on Hot Creek. I had a blast. Um, I have some other some other guide buddies in the area, but it was lot, lots of fun. Uh, and cic yeah, cicadas, I mean, we don't have them in New Mexico. Well, we have cicadas, but we don't have the brood eggs. What's it like being a guide? Are you happy? Is it my dream job? Yes, it is. When I was, I, so I worked at Orvis when I was 14 years old. I was the youngest employee in, at Orvis nationally. So my mom would like drop me off at work. I had to get a worker's permit. Store number 55, Tyson's Corner. Shout out to Dan Ovington who, who hired me there. Um, but yeah, guiding, it's, it's a lot of fun. It does become a job. I will say that. So like you can see my desk is a mess. Um, it's the greatest job ever. Um, I mean, my wife probably has the hardest job, you know, hanging out with the kiddos, you know, that's, uh, I have the easy job on that side, but um, you know, you still have to tie flies, you know, it's a, it's a job, um, you know, but it's, it's, it's the best one that I've ever had. Uh, going in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska, favorite carp fly. Uh, my favorite carp fly, I call it an Admiral Akbar, like the Star Wars character. It's a, just a, it's a Egan's headstand variation. It's literally, um, it's a falling mill jig hook, number eight, squirmy worm tail, dubbing loop of simi seal and Oliver Brown, and then like orange double pupil eyes from, uh, hairline. So it rides hook point up with a squirmy worm. Just let that thing die and slow strip. I like carp a lot. We hooked a couple when I floated the other day with my buddy. Um, it's been a while. 
but the lake over here has them. Uh, yeah, Spencer, that's a good one. If you, you could definitely bump the grains up on your seven weight to slow it down. Um, it, if you think it's it's too crisp, too fast, a heavier line is going to force that rod to load a little deeper, flex a little bit deeper. So you might like that. Yeah, Bosnia was awesome. I'd love to go. I'd love to go back. Um, how do I stop butt wrapping my reel? Do you mean like the line going around your fighting butt? If that, it's just paying attention because it, it still happens to me. <laughs> when I'm not paying attention. Mr. Lay, hey, I'm not your dad. Um, Alpine lake fishing, but never done it from Denver. I've done a little bit of it. Actually, let me give Ben's secret lakes out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've done it here, and then when I live closer to high alpine lakes, it's a lot of boot work you kind of finding what lakes have fish, which ones are dead. Generally, if you've heard about it from a bunch of people, it's probably not as good as you think. If the further you go, generally it can be better. I haven't done a ton of it. I'm no expert. I'm just, again, um, Colorado does have, they heli stock a lot of those lakes every few years. So if you can find that list, I don't even know where you could find it, but, um, or just talk to like a fisheries biologist in the area that you want to go fish. Cause to a fisheries biologist, they don't, some of them don't fish. They don't care. They're not giving away some secret, you know? So um, speaking to like a local fisheries biologist and whatever forest suits service unit you're thinking about, that could really narrow the search. If you're looking for like a specific fish um, like a Rio Grande cut or Colorado river cut, right? Whatever's endemic. Or if you just want brook trout, whatever. Um, but that would be my advice. Um, you know, you can do a lot of scouting on Onyx. Um, people give a lot of things away on the internet and on Instagram, I'll just tell you. So like there's a lake that I joke about with my buddies. We call it Instagram Lake because everyone goes there to catch big cutthroat. And like if you've ever been there, it's, it's incredibly obvious like where it is. So you can kind of use Onyx landmarks from Instagram forums right and just and google search to kind of figure out an area or also look for a spot where there's like three or four lakes together so you can hedge your bets one of them's going to fish well um a dream trout yeah i'd love to catch a golden trout and a or a, a time is high up there for salmonids that's but i don't have the bag for that right now Yeah, the San Diego, um, catching bay bass in San Diego is awesome. Shout out to my guy, Dave Smith, um, and, and Dwayne Johnson there at the, the, uh, San Diego club. We had a really fun time catching spotted bay bass, cut some little small halibut as well. Just blows my mind. It's such an amazing fishery right there in San Diego. And if you don't have time to go trout fishing, to be able to go rent a boat for 50 bucks and catch a bunch of fish on a six weight. Um, that pull really hard that close to the city is is awesome. So like I, I grew up outside of DC, so we'd like shad fish a lot in the city. I poach a lot of bass ponds uh, for largemouth, and then this is before I was eighteen. And then you know you could catch striped bass too right in DC. So that was also fun to take advantage of. It reminded me of that. Um, I've never fished the driftless. I've always wanted to. It's up on the list. La Torte. So. No. So I went up to, I was, I was fishing the Delaware in high school or college, or high school, college. My buddy Rick and I went up to the Delaware river on the Pennsylvania, New York border. And we were driving through where the Latour was and we fished it at night. Um, and so we saw a couple of fish. My buddy hooked a tree with his mouse and snapped his rod in half. So we only fished it for like 10 minutes. And we're like that, that kind of dampened things. And then we just flew up to New York. Um, so, I maybe made 10 casts in the Latour at night. Um, how many rods do I have? A lot, uh, like 20, I don't even know. There's, there's rods sitting everywhere. There's three of them right there. There's 10 of them. I have too many, it's a sin, honestly. I'll probably do a giveaway with some of what I don't use. Um, preferred way of rigging a dry dropper with barbless hooks. 
Yeah, um, I still I still rig dry dropper rigs off the bend, but if you're sl if if they come, so the thing is, if you crimp the barb on a barbless hook, there's still sometimes a little bit of a bump, and it'll catch the tippet from slipping off. It's a, if it's factory barbless, they have a bigger propensity to slide off. So I would just tie it off a tag is w what I would recommend. Fish the dry off a tag, and then you won't have that problem. Um. The best drift boat out there is the one you can afford. The one. <laughs> uh, how far south can you fish the Rio Grande? You, I mean, you can fish the Rio in Mexico. There's what? There's fish in it the whole way down. Yeah, I'd love to make it back out to California. Um, so I will hit you up if I'm ever back out there. Hopefully it's going to be there. Hey, Cece, caught a brookie in the Golden Trout Wilderness, was a surprise at Bishop Lake. It was, I, I'm jealous of all the, the diversity of species you guys have there in California. It's so cool because you can go fish. You can fish for bay bass and halibut. You can go catch mahi. And then, you know, you can catch trout all in a 24-hour period. Bass, it's, there's a lot out there. What's my biggest rainbow trout? I guess the one I just caught on the wand, if you're not counting um, like the rainbows running out of the Lake Erie trips, I'm definitely on the steelhead debate. If it doesn't touch salt water in my book, it's not a steelhead. So I've caught some really big rainbows pushing out of um, Erie and Ontario trips when I, I grew up on the East Coast. Uh, but my like non biggest non lake run was the one I hit like a month ago, but I didn't I didn't tape it, but it was by far bigger than anything I've caught previously. Hello from Brazil. I don't know any Portuguese, but I got like a, a, a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, golden trout seem awesome. My go-to fly for prospecting, it depends if I'm, you know, if I'm nymphing, you know, I'm gonna throw some sort of pheasant tail or a hair's ear variation. On my YouTube channel, I have a fly called a search and destroy that I really like. Like it's a tag slash CDC slash, you know, uh, flashback it kind of you throw in the kitchen sink at them but pheasant tail and hairs your variations um waltz worms things like that you got a backpack into the eastern sierras i that's on the bucket list i would love to do the golden trail wilderness and get all three subspecies Yeah, I've heard that about Wyoming someday. Uh, tying demonstration. I actually, after this, I have a bunch of trips that I have procrastinated on tying size 26s for. So I gotta get gotta get all about that. My favorite small. I didn't fish for a ton of smallmouth um, when I grew up living on the East Coast, but like clousers, basically like foxy clousers, clouser variations. Um, you know, I was kind of a trout snob, um, but I do enjoy catching smallmouth. I think, I, I think I'm knocking these out. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. But yeah, I, unfortunately, it's been slow with the uploads. Um, like peak season is here, so it's been tough. Um, kind of staying on top of the YouTube stuff, but I'm going to get a drone, I think. So there's that. Um yeah, 26s. Let me see. They're all sitting. Where are they? Need to buy more. I'm almost out. Here you go. <laughs> My favorite beer. I'm on a Guinness kick right now. Got to get down with me Irish roots. I'll, I'll one third of it. How can I tell at the start of the day if my client can fish? Well, that's the thing. It's a team, it's a team effort, you know? I mean, I think that comes with guiding is you you need to match what you're doing to to your client's skill sets. I mean, it it, it depends, really. Because you can have some of the cast really well, but their hook sets are too tough or or vice versa. So I think it's just 
it's really having those conversations in the beginning of the day and seeing what they want to get out of the day, what you can improve on. You know, you're, you're there with you for eight hours with somebody. Uh, so I think, you know, there's a lot of hilarious memes out there. And I, as the season progresses and we, and our, you know, we start to get in the triple digits of guiding, I'm sure you're going to see some like guide burnout memes and things like that. Um, but I, you know, to me, honestly, a client that's brand new is sometimes it's the best because you get to mold them, right? There's no bad habits. Um, so it, it, it just depends, but I mean, it's, it's, it's casting. I mean, what I look for it, casting line control and hook sets. Um, so, and you can tell pretty quick, you're going to be able to tell within five, 10 casts favorite fly for the San Juan. I like a lot of foam backs. Uh, I mean, it's really like, I mean, I fish like six patterns out there in just different sizes and colors, but I, I mean, I fish a foam back and an RS two every single day. So if I had to choose one, I would say a, a foam back or a foam wing emerger. I did not hear the podcast. I'm like traditional flies versus it looks like nothing, but um, I'm a big believer in match the column. I mean, I throw some wild stuff out in the wand, but even just when I, you know, guiding in Chama a bunch, you know, I throw some, some weird stuff. I mean, like what's a milkman look like, you know, it's just, a, it's a thing. Um, and that's, there's been some confusion there. That's, that's um, Eric Kelly from Falling Mills Pattern. I did credit him in that video, which is really important because people think I invented it. I didn't. It's a, it's a waltzworm variation with a white bead and it smashes fish, especially in stained water. So shout out to Eric for dropping that on us. Uh, Andy, I'm a, I guess I'm a, I'm a steak guy. Yeah, hook sets. It took me a long time. You know, when I went to school in Montana, um, my, all my buddies would clown me for like my gorilla hook set. So, you know, that's the thing. Like I always joke with with my people when we're on guide trips, like I'm not here to scold you. I'm not here to yell. And any mistake that you've done or anything that I, I'm, I'm, you know, constructively observing, I've done the same thing like a thousand times. Why do you think I'm so good at taking out knots? It's because I've knotted myself hundreds and hundreds of times. Any thoughts on Euro sticks in the 500? No, for five, just get, just get a Shadow X. For 500 bucks, Shadow X. You will thank me, I promise. How often, all, how often is one of my clients a, a good fisherman, a good angler? Always. That's the thing. It's setting expectations. That's why people hire guides. You know, I mean, if you think, you know, if like people are hiring you to, is you're supposed to be an ambassador to the sport and teach and help people if they're struggling in certain areas. And so it's like any, I just like hanging out with people and taking them fishing. So it doesn't matter if it's day 5,000 or if it's day one, you know, we're going to have a good time. Um, but I mean, I think with YouTube for sure, I've attracted, like, I, I seem to get, I mean, it just depends with that, it, it just depends where you are in the country guiding. If you're in an area like the Juan that attracts people that like to fish versus like if you're guiding in a tourist destination where it's just something to do, you're going to notice a big difference in anglers, right? Some Someone might go hot air, ride a hot air balloon. Someone might go, you know, hiking, and then they're going to try fly fishing just like I would look at a river rafting trip. I don't, and I, I raft, but like... I don't do whitewater rafting. It's not my passion, but if I was in, in the Grand Canyon, it's something that I might do because I'm there. And, you know, I've guided in places like that. The people are on vacation. They want to experience fly fishing, kind of check it off the list. And then pivoting to like the Juan, this is a river that attracts anglers from all over. So that you, you see the, the very, the, uh, you see a difference in terms of, in terms of skill sets from day ones to more experienced anglers. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> the Beardo fly. Yeah, that one. I'm surprised that video didn't have more views, but it definitely works. Um, <laughs> but the thing with that video is I went to a spot on that river where I knew there was like 2,000 fish, really heavy current, and it was early in the morning before a lot of insect activity. And that that's really like the, the backstory behind the, the Beardo. There was a size 16 hook on the wand, which is big for out there. Weighted eggs. Yeah. I mean, you also could buy like a tungsten bead, slide it up your leader, tie the egg on and let it slide down. And now you have a weighted egg or just crimp a split shot right in front of it. 
Yeah, switching around can mess up hook sets. I mean, like if I've guided like for a, you know, if I'm on a hot streak for a while, then I go fish on my day off. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit to recalibrate. Um, turning into Ontario. Um, yes, I do have a good story from like the Lake Erie trips. Like one of my buddies, we were out there. He like went through a breakup. His like girlfriend was from Jersey and he had like an Ed Hardy t-shirt and it was really cold. So like, hey, we should light that on fire. Ed Hardy t-shirt, stay warm. The only thing is it only burned for like two minutes. It was like, I think it was like 18 degrees out there. But watching that happen, um, that was hilarious. Um, most memorable fishing day during the pandemic. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there was, depending on what state you lived in or where you were, um, I had a few of them, but I, I would say, you know, kind of going to Arizona. Um, Chaz is my twin. Yes. <laughs> my angling is at least better than my hot air ballooning. I agree. You wouldn't want me on the sticks and the, on the hot air balloon. I have learned a great deal from guides. Best to get a different guide to learn different techniques. Do you agree? It depends. I mean, it depends. Um, I mean, if you want to, like, if you wanted to learn how to do Tenkara, I would say don't book me. I don't know that, you know? So <laughs> there you go. Um, did you go to a guide school? Um, not like, it's kind of, you know? Um, but that's a, that's another story for another day. Um, my favorite Euro reel. I fish a lot of like straight 4X, so something with a full cage. Right now I'm fishing a Hardy, the, their new ultralight reels. It's a half cage, so the line can't slip through and get cut, catch, uh, or get, get caught between the spool and the frame. I don't have it here because it's in my boat. But hopefully that helps. Um, I'm a Rio guy. I, I mean, I, I have SA lines too. Uh, and then I was affiliated with Airflow for a while. And then Ross acquired them from... So Ray Jeff Sports used to distribute uh, Airflow products here in the US. That was bought out by the Mayfly Group, which owns Ross and Abel. So, and then Ray Jeff actually ended up folding like their their promotional staff program. Um, I'm actually affiliated with Hardy now. I haven't made that announcement, but you'll see more Hardy stuff in my videos. I guide with a lot of Hardy stuff now. Um, here, I mean, look, I got some got some Hardy backing right here. There's a, a piece of a rod falling off my desk. Uh, but yeah, so, so now I'm with Hardy. Um, but I don't even know where I'm going with this. Favorite Euro reel. They make great stuff. Is my angling is competitive. That's good. Yeah, my bachelor party was on the Green River. Um, on the A section. I mean, we did more drinking than fishing, but it was great. Fish fish were caught. It was a fun time. Um, have I ever bit a fish is head off? Um maybe. Um, what percent of my bookings are repeats? A fair amount. You know, it's nice to have that, um, it's nice to have that relationship guide client, right? You know, the expectations, you both know each other's styles, you can really work as a team. Um, and I see that too, when I see the repeat bookings come through, you know, that's, that means that I'm, I'm doing a good job, right? If they keep coming back. So, um, yeah, it's important to me. Let me see. I'm trying to feed, feed the trolls here. Um... Hi, bikes and fish. Mono formulas versus Euro shorties. 
That's a good question. I don't have any Euro shorty lines. I just fish lots of mono where it's legal. Like some states, it's not legal. Pennsylvania, I haven't lived out there, but when I was back on the East Coast, you couldn't fish longer than an 18 foot leader. So that that's where a shorty or a Euro line would be handy. Out here, it doesn't matter. So I just fish a, a real long butt section on a Euro leader. I haven't had any problems with it. And you know, it's, it's, if you're going to throw dry, like if you're in a position to go throw dries, then go throw dries with it, with a dry line. Um, with, I like to throw dries on a Euro leader. Like when I guide, a lot of people hate it. Um, but it's a skill that I think if, you know, it's good to have, like if the hatch pops off and you don't have the time to switch spools or do something like that, it's, it's good to learn. It's a big pain, but once you get it, it's easy. It's like riding a bike. Um, but I, you know, if you can have an extra spool on you or you have time to pull, you know, take the Euro leader off, you have a three weight line on your Euro system and then put, um, a tapered leader on it. I just do that. If I'm on the, if, if you're going to fish dry dropper, fish dry dropper, if you're going to fish Euro, fish Euro, um, big believer in that. How does being affiliated with fly fishing companies work? Um, it, it they reach out. You know, I, I, it's not, a, no one's ever going to be like, oh, you're so nasty at fish. You know, it's, it's a, it's a give and take, if you will. It's mutually beneficial, right? Um, and I'm just being honest. I think like, you know, people think pro, it stands for promotional, right? You're there to promote the products. Like I, you know, I'm wearing an Echo hat right now. I still fish Echo rods. I believe in the product. I just bought one full retail uh, the other day, because I love guiding with it. I'm affiliated with Hardy. I love Hardy reels. I love Hardy rods. You know, I mean, I believe in it too. Um, they're two different price points. It's two different things. Um, but that's, uh, you know, working with those companies, especially if you're a guide, you're putting those products in anglers' hands every day or five days a week, six days a week. Or I don't guide on Sundays. But that's what they want. And then in return, you know, you can work together some symbiosis, right? Um, I met huge fly fisherman on Craigslist. Um, I've never, oh, I'm knock on wood. I've never sunk a boat. Um, I've never, um, uh, I've never sunk a boat and I, I hope to keep that record intact. Um, yeah, we almost flipped. I did the Gunnison Gorge when I first moved out to the Rockies with my buddy and we were in some big water. We got it pinned on our rock and I was standing on the edge of it to keep the boat from flipping. The raft slid off. I got dumped, but I had my life vest on, so it's all good. If I could be in one place right now, it would be with my boy Chaz in Jamaica making reggae like records. Um, hey, Tom, you're the man. Los Pinos Fly Shop, check them out, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I'm trying to see bikes and fish, your other part of the comment, hi, and fish that one place with one fly. If I could be anywhere to go fish and fish one place with one fly, like right now, I'd love to be in Mongolia throwing like a big lemming pattern to a time in. There it is. Um, president of our, well, Ch I just fished with Charlie. Actually, he, Charlie was out here, um, and we, we wrecked fish. It was a lot of fun. Charlie's a stick. Hey, Charlie. Hello from New Mexico. builds rods yeah different rods i mean it, it different rods and different lines um that's that's a very good point cc you know some rods like a half line weight heavier or a full line weight heavier to slow them down speed them up it just depends i mean i i've always been i've like broomsticks for a while and i guess now as i've mellowed out you know um slow down. I like softer rods. Thoughts on fiberglass. Actually, 
So this is terrible. Oh no. Shoot, you guys are seeing my toilet paper stash. It's like Bitcoin. It's only going to accrue. Anyway, I was going to show you uh, Cam, shout out Cam, from Fiberglass Manifesto sent me a glass rod. I've just been so busy, I haven't been able to fish it, but I think I'm going to go creek in in the next week or two. I'm really not a fiberglass person. I, I own one fiberglass rod, and that was the one that Cam sent me. Um but I, you know, I love what Cam's doing at Fiberglass Manifesto. I love the culture that he's built over there. I'm like, hey, man, I want to join the wave. Um, so I got an eagle claw glass rod. Actually, I have caught fish on that rod. Not the one he sent me um, way back in high school. My buddy had one. Um, but this is the first time I've owned a glass rod. I've always liked faster, quicker rods. So we're going gonna to try that out. Um, let's see. Um, there might be kids here. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on fiber class. I've never guided anyone famous. I've guided a couple legends in their own minds though. Uh, yeah, that TP, you saw that baby. This is a duck camp hoodie with the about trout logo. I'm going to have more of these made in gray and this blue color as well. They sold out really quick. Um, and I'm putting an order in this week. Just talk to Duck Camp. My favorite largemouth fly, I love deer hair poppers. Um, those, if I'm going to fish for largemouth, like especially in high school, I got caught on the golf course and the guy's like, if you're going to do this, you should come back at night. I'm like, I can come back at night. It's like, I never said, he's like, whatever. So I'm like, all right. So I just took that as an invitation. So I fished a lot of nights throwing just big deer hair poppers at night. Um, and listening to the bass suck them down. It's awesome. So I, I, there's nothing to me as cool as watching a, a largemouth suck down a big deer hair popper. I do not build rods, CC. Um, Los Pinos Fly Shop, Tom Sawyer builds rods. They built me this beautiful. This is a CTS. This is an 11 foot three weight right here that I love. Um, and that was in my last video in Arizona, but I, I just don't have the time right now. I would love to maybe, maybe build bamboo rods, go split some, uh, split some cane size of bicolor. Yeah. I like four X. I mean, I think if you're going to go thin, go thin. Um, it, you know, especially it's not going to cast the nicest, especially if you're a newer caster, but I think it's the most versatile in terms of like, if it's super windy, you can go really heavy and pull that slider tight and fish far away. You can fish really light beads and, and really see them register on the slider a lot. I find myself either fishing straight 4X or a thicker leader formula that tapers on the two so I can do dry dropper stuff, maybe jig some bigger streamers if there's some bigger fish around. I, I, that's pretty much where I'm at now. 4X and a leader that tapers down to two. Um... If I could only use one fly for the rest of my life, for all species, some a woolly bugger, if I could tie it in different sizes and colors and weight. Oh, I appreciate that, Frank. Yeah, AJ is the man. If you haven't checked out the Outdoor Podcast, he's got a lot of great guests on. He works really hard on it. Um, some of my guide buddies will be on there too. And I did a podcast with AJ, so it was a lot of fun. He's a great interviewer. Do I have a hobby besides fishing, um, raising owls, and fighting crime? They're my two other hobbies. Um, yeah, I do make three XLs. I sold. I only got one last time. It was popular, um, and that got sold real quick. But if you want them, if anyone wants more of these duck camp hoodies, I'm putting in another order this week. So just info it about trout. Get me your sizing info. We'll make it happen. Camo, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to do gray and this blue color. Um, I have been outfished by otters. On When I used to steelhead, I'd swing through a run, and I'd hear them clicking, and they'd walk off with a fish. I've been low hold by otters. And if you're referring to the time we fished, who was on the oars most of the day? Um, people are getting into one weights. Yeah. So growing up out East, one weights were really popular for brook trout. 
I mean, a big brook trout out there is 10 inches. Um, so I have a two way. Uh, if I still live back out east or I did a lot of creek creek stuff, um, I have a zero weight or a triple zero weight. Um, you know, the east, east Coast brook trout fishing is where those were really popular, where I have seen. Um, and I've also heard it in Japan because it's a lot like the East Coast. Um, the sage, when I worked at L.L. Bean, the sage rep at the time said they sold more zero weights in Japan than like everything in the United States by a lot. But same thing, uh, high rocky, high gradient rocky streams, smaller trout. Um, for Hardy, I, they don't make it anymore. I have their UAD, their CAD that I really liked, um, that I guided with a bunch. Now I'm using their ultralights. Um, and it just depends where you're going to use it, you know? Um, but, but I, I think Hardy does a really good job with their reels. I'm also a big Nautilus fan as well. I think the, their drags are pretty exceptional. Yeah. Um, that full cage Hardy... Uh, here's the box right here. Tom, if you're still here, chime in, bro. Uh, this is horrible. It is the, oh my gosh. It's the Hardy Ultra Disc. I'll show you a picture of it. It's in my boat right now. Um, but you know, on the, on the one, I guide with a lot of 6X. So here's that half cage. So the, you thread the line through here, and then that way it can't slip through the spool and get caught up in the frame or in the drags. Um, let's see. My personal best brown, um, I haven't cracked 30. I've come close in Tennessee. We taped it. it I had a Scott, I have a Scott that's got S4 goes to 24. And I quickly put my palm down and a knuckle and there was a little bit, but I'll just call it 28. Um, and that was on a mouse on the Soho. We're not lower than last year. I was just over in the Chama Valley on Saturday. Um, the flows are double what they were this time last year, but yeah, it's, it has not been, um, it has not been a good water year for sure. Um, Sage makes a triple zero weight. Uh, my favorite waiter is I've been like a Sims guy for uh, 13 years. My first pair of waiters were Orvis waiters. Um, you know, now I mostly guide out of a boat. So I wear Crocs, I guide in Crocs. Um, but I have a pair of Sims G4Zs. So they're a little thicker than the G3s. I'm really hard on my gear. Um, they're lying in a pile. You can't see it I'm, uh, behind me here, but they're starting to leak. It's not a matter of if your waders are going to leak, it's when. And what I like about Sims is it seems like it's, it's always death by a thousand cuts. So like I've had other brands, I'm not going to put them on blast, um, where they're sonically welded. And so when the seams go, they just blow out and it's a nightmare with Sims. I can beat the snot out of them and I can slowly patch them. They're leaking. I'll patch them. They're le you know what I mean? So they last for a long time. Ultralight rods. Yeah, I don't, I mean, the smallest I go is 28s on the gummies. Um, yeah, studded Crocs are the move. You got to put them in the sport mode. Um, I used to hate on Crocs, and then I became a dad. And it's like it's the wedding ring for twenty twenty one. You know, you're wearing Crocs, obviously. You know, um, you know, you're a Croc guy now. Um, what level guide am I? I'm the best Irish Arab Mexican guide in the country. There's another one out there. We can fight for supremacy, uh, but I, I I doubt that there is. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, you air your waders out and don't let accidents happen in them. But yeah, uh, that's how that waiter funk. You can flip them inside out. Um, also, if you're not wearing socks when you're wearing waders, when it gets hot, that it can get nasty in there. Yeah, I know you're right, Aiden.
you got to put them in the put them in the sport mode, especially on those full days. Um, yeah, Crocs, Croc gang, where you at? I should do some some about trout Crocs. Uh, the Echo Gecko. Yeah, I let my I let my daughter fish with like stuff that she, she shouldn't be fishing with, but um, Ben loves the echo gecko for his kids i should own one um but i've heard nothing but the best about the echo gecko it's an awesome awesome stick yo jp hampton outdoors diy you're missing out get a pair of crocs well thank me um oh i'm getting texts from the channel david i see you Oh, well, I'll answer that later. Or, David, you can ask me in the comments. Um, do I prefer your CBD injected, uh, grinded up, and sprinkled? Um, yeah, Crocs don't belong in the fire. CG, you're about to get banned. Um, yeah, Crocs, if you want to, you know, I, I would love to be a Crocs ambassador, so holler at me. Echo Carbon XL four weight. I guide with the ten foot four weight. It's like I have two of them. They're awesome. Yeah, Crocs. Exactly. The the About Trout Crocs collab would be just next level. That's how I know I'd really make it in the industry. Um, I like the off road Crocs. They have a more aggressive tread pattern. I like the ventilation. Um, and when I wear them, you know, you stand like an inch and a half taller. So what's not to love? Uh, Signature merch about trout car. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll look into it. If we could get some about trout crocs out there, let's shut it down. Yo, be careful, guys. There might be some kids in these comments. You never know. Let's keep it, let's keep it PG. I um <clears throat> um yeah, Crocs are the wave. Um, hold on. I've never, I've never fought another guy. I like, I like being peaceful, right? Like, why not just be everyone's friend? Um, best fish of the year. Um, they're all special. Um, <laughs> uh, yo, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll ignore that. Um, you know, back in the dungeon, um, best fish of the year is that rainbow. What was cool about that was it was my personal best rainbow, but I went, I went out you know, fishing a way that I wanted to fish in a spot where I knew there was big fish and caught a big fish, you know, like I didn't roulette into it. Um, so that was cool. Cause I'm, I'm a big believer in like big fish choose you. And definitely I've caught a lot of big fish that, you know, I was right, right place, right time. You know, they say luck is when skill and opportunity meet, you know, and when that big fish does decide to eat, that's where the skill kicks in in terms of, of landing them, you know, fighting them, doing everything that you need to do. But that was what was really special about that, that fish was that I went to a spot looking for a big fish with a fly that I tied specifically for that location that swam the way I wanted to swam, that had the hook where it was, you know, so it was, it was cool to like make it happen, I guess. But that big fish still chose me, you know, um, like I, you know because I haven't touched a fish on that fly anywhere near that size. So uh, I'd rather be lucky than good, that's for sure. Uh, I appreciate it, Renzetti gang, where you at? I, someone, got into, we got, there, someone got into it in the comments, but I don't care what you say. I'll rep Renzetti forever. Purist on the fly. Let's do a Purist X About Trout Croc collab. If you are not down, then you're scared. Yeah, Mick, that was my best fish of the year. I, I mean, I haven't really done a lot of personal fishing this year just because I've been so busy guiding, which is, that's the point, right? Um, you know, that's, I'll never complain about that. Um, 
but yeah, the, the, the best fish of the year was that one, not because, yeah, because it was big, but because of the thought process and the intent that went into catching it. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, like the, of the last couple of years, my two best favorite fish have been less than 10 inches long. I caught a Gila trout and the Apache trout was super special and a softmouth trout in Bosnia. And those fish were all like this. And those mean more to me than, you know, a lot. Um, I have fished Central. I fished the Metolius and that was amazing. And I, I wish I could go back. Um, I've had, I've had a lot of ones get away. <laughs> Um, yo, Peter G. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, things happen. What happens on the wand stays on the wand is how I see it. I'm not a cop. Um, I'm a narc. Um, have I ever fished the South Platte before? Never. Should I? Let me know. I feel like I have to. Um, how late in the calendar can you fish the wand? Yeah. You can fish it every single day of the year. It's I mean, we had closures because of COVID, but now it's open to everybody. Um, but yeah, um, it you can fish the one every single day. It's it's an, it's a tremendous tremendous fishery. The most effective way to fish for stock trout. All right, I mean, there was a time in my career where I guided for a lot of stock trout, um, and. You know, so stock trout, the way it works is that, so take take notes. If you live in North Carolina, if you live in Virginia, if you live in heavily stock, I'm going to give you the secrets right here. So stock trout, they're raised in hatcheries. A lot of them are raised in concrete raceways. They nip at each other's fins and they have a tendency to pod up, right? So first, what you want to figure out is where do the stocking trucks back in? So you'll see like state stocking trucks. They're usually built, they're usually on dualies, right? And you have to think that if you're working for the state stocking trout, you're, you're trying to get in and get out because you have a lot of different stops to hit, right? So they're going to stock these same spots all the time. So some of the spots that I used to go to, it's like, okay, I have 10 days before these stockers all get killed. Um, so stock trout, um, you, number one, know where the stocking trucks are going to back in, major key. Number two, they're dumb right? And they're going to pod up. I mean, there was rivers I used to guide where I'd run ahead and you could like herd them into a ball and like blow them all out. Then what you can do is you can start with like really, you can go about this two ways. One, you can start with like more natural flies and progressively get louder and louder and louder and louder or the reverse. So if they're like mops, worms, eggs, and then get techier and techier and like rehook them all again. I mean, look, I'm not proud of it, but you ask, this is what I'm here to give you. I, I just want to keep it. I want my uh, spring water to be clear. You can drink from it. You can get this, the stock trout knowledge, but that's the best. Eggs, mops, and then recirc through the pod. Keep dropping your fly sizes down. Go drabber and drabber and drabber. And it is what it is. Um, But Ricky, I hope that helps. Yeah, I've seen the crack. There's multiple crackins um, in there. We sight fished to one this winter. We got it to eat, um, but we didn't connect, unfortunately. Um, we've had some, you know, some. I've I've seen them. My buddy out there, shout out my buddy Tom Farrell. They boated a 34 in the net. It was ridiculous. That guy guided his tail off, man. His client hooked that fish on a size 26 on 6X. He coached him right through it, and then they revived the fish. Absolutely top-notch guiding. So, Tom, shout out to you, brother. Um, but, yeah, there's a few of them. There, the, what the crazy thing about the San Juan is everywhere that there's 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 a gigantic fish everywhere there should be in there. Um, like if you're referring to like T-hole, there's like five or six krakens in there. Um, and the more you're out there, the more you'll see them. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. That day there was three fish 30 or bigger that came out of the one. It was, it was nuts. I like your rainbow drawers as well. Uh, Crocs do run true to size, but I mean, I don't, I wouldn't wear them over my waders, but live your truth, stun them out. 
Yeah, no problem, Ricky. I hope that I hope that helps. I mean, that's kind of like the dark. Maybe I'll do like an anonymous tell-all book, like the dark secrets of guiding. You just got a a view into that, but it is what it is, man. I mean, like my thing is, if we're gonna go blast stalkers, let's just go blast stalkers. You know, let's not pretend, right? Um, yeah, I mean, like, like let, let's be real. Like, I, I used to guide, like, private ranches where they feed the fish dog food. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, weird. Like, why are these 25-inch trout in a half-mile river? It's like, well, because they feed them dog food. So it's like, let's, you know, like, you're not going there for, like, the sport of it, right? Like, you're going there to catch a big fish. So let's go catch a big fish, right? That's why you paid the Raji. That's, that's, that's my take on it. Yeah, the San Juan's a tailwater. It's you have to wear waders all year. You can get hypothermia even in August, July. Um, in the Gila, I mean, I fished Mineral Creek. I'll say it out loud because Mineral Creek they still allow you to keep two fish, and I would love to see New Mexico have more catch and release water. The hike is pretty rough to get in there, so anyone going in there, you know, is going to treat the river with respect. I mean, because you, you got to commit to go in there. So Zach, I would recommend log Canyon trail number 808. And I just threw a single dry and that's how I caught those Gila trout in there. But I think that, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that you can still keep like wild Gila's that, you know, they're, I mean, they just got off the endangered species list not too, too long ago. Colorful CO fly fishing. What is up? Yeah, purist, I'm down. I mean, hopefully you can agree what I'm saying. Like my thing is like, if you're going to fish for stock trout, like fish for stock trout. And like, you're not going there to take a nature hike. You're going there to catch stock trout. There's like levels to it. Um, so like, hopefully these tips will help. Let me know um, if, if kind of what I suggested helps you. Yeah, I used to live in Washington State, Matt. Um, I used to work for Avid Angler in um, Lake Forest Park. So shout out Ryan Smith, who still owns it. Mark Shimazu, um, Dave Jenkins, and Jacob Powell left. But I work with those guys, too. A really awesome shop if you're in the Seattle area. Um, there's a lot of great shops in Seattle. They had a really great community of anglers out there. Um, but I work for Avid. I have nothing but the best things to say about Avid Angler. Um, and yeah, I've used to fish a lot of the peninsula rivers. I would fish the east side rivers for steelhead and for trout as well. Um, I really, really loved fishing in Washington. I loved living there. I love the rain. And now I'm in the desert, right? So, uh, but yeah, Washington was, was awesome. Um, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> I had the dog food hatch, the Purina hatch. Well, I appreciate you. You know, I just try to, I just try to keep it, keep it transparent, keep it real on the pod podcast. Laguna Rio outdoors knows. Yeah. I mean, like as long as you're not pegging be beads, unless you're an Alaska guy, like, you know, do what you got to do. My favorite Euro nymph. That's like a loaded question because Euro nymph things are technique. So you can, you know, you can Euro nymph a size 26 midge, right? If it's on a Euro leader. Um, but, uh, I mean, like, like I said, like waltz worm variation, pair their gones, the pheasant tail stuff. Yeah, purist on the fly dog. He'll, he'll, he'll come find you. I like, I actually like greasing my beads up and floating them. And that's super effective. Um, yeah, I mean, steelhead stories. So I have a buddy, he was in the comments over here and I fished, I went up, um, to go fishing with him in Washington and I hooked a steelhead and I lost it the next year, a year to the day later with the exact same rod, I hooked a King or I'm sorry. I hooked a King. I swung, I had a King on and that thing was doing backflips. It was nuts. And we lost it right at the bank. It gator rolled and threw the hook a year to the day later. I was up in Washington, same rod, same buddy hooked a steelhead and lost it. So I never touched that rod again. It was cursed. Um, the, I can do my, my best Russian I'm not a, I don't have a good Russian accent. I can try it for you here, but my Eastern European is no good. There you go. Um, 
but that's my best steelhead story. I mean, my first, you never forget your first, you know, I was on the peninsula, stepped into a bucket. It felt super fishy. And I looked at my buddy and I was like, and he like true friend, cause I had, I'd never caught a steelhead. And he's like, Hey, I want you to get first shots at this run. I was like, you're the man. Um, so I step into the bucket and I'm just feeling it. The water's that perfect color flows are dropping. And I look up, I'm like, I can feel it. It's going to happen. And like three casts later, loop gets yanked. It's, where is it? I think I have a picture of it. It's like back here. Oh, I did have a picture of it. Loop gets ripped. Thing starts doing cartwheels. We got that. We got, we tailed it, kept it in the water. Wild, wild fish crumbed out and released it. And that was uh, very special. Yeah, it's not up there, but that was uh, that was it. But I think I was only going to do this for an hour. I have to have gone over a few minutes by like 15, like a quarter of an hour. But I really appreciate everybody checking it out. I just want to let all you guys know I really appreciate the support. I'm still alive. I do have a full-time job, which is um, – being a fishing guide. So, you know, my season, thank God, has been super packed. I've been been busier than I've ever been. So it's been tough to kind of film and edit YouTube videos, um, get them out there for you. But I'm thinking about it, trying to get some stuff put together um, for this month. I've been trying to get like one a month out. It's tough. But if you want to see more of these lives, these are super easy for me to do. I like speaking to everybody, um, listening to your guys' stories as well. Hope you're out there catching fish. And uh, maybe I'll do another one in a couple weeks. But thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thanks for the support. If you want one of these, info at abouttrout.com. I'm putting an order in this week. And uh, yeah, that's my life. Um, it was great to hear that you guys are out there catching fish and enjoying the great outdoors. Stay safe. And uh, I'll see you soon.